inside our sample just do right click new java class and write pop up controller because we need a controller and we need a view so right click new fxml file and write pop up and now again we need to create this and then actually use this controller to do something if we now go to the pop-up you will see that it is empty and again you can download the code so you don't have to write it for yourself but let's just see that it is empty when you create it and now I'll use my code and uh, as you can see this is my code and when we run it it will look something like this so let me open it in the scene builder and it says looks like this is your first time using type practice and you can enter your name and this name will have a ID because we need to extract it as you can see ID username and this button will have an on action method submit so now when we go to our pop-up controller we need to extract the data and just save it to the file so again we type fxml and then private text field because the thing that the user enters name is called a text field and username and we need to import when you're importing always use javafx not java awt and then we just have a simple method which gets called when the user presses the button as you can see when i go here it says on action is submit and as you can see this method is called submit and so we take the name, username, get text. So we get the text which user entered. We create the file writer because we're going to be writing in the file. So let me delete this and let that be empty. And we open the file, we write our name inside, we close the file and then we go to the main screen as you can see here. So let's now test the program and see how it works. So now you can see it says welcome user and not welcome Java coding. Today's Friday works. And when I click play, it says looks like this is your first time using type practice and I can enter my name. And when I click submit, I go to the main screen and it says welcome JCC, which is the name I just entered. And when I go to the file, you can see it says JCC. So it works. And the next thing we're going to be doing is we're, when we now press play, I think the program will crash. As, yeah, as you can see, it crashes because when we go to our controller and we already have a name, we need to change it to game.fxml, but the game.fxml doesn't exist yet. And now the next step is we're going to be creating the actual game. Let's create a game controller, so new Java class, and let's call it game controller and new fxml file for our view, and let's call it game. And again, I'll just copy my styling, you can do the same. Um, and then I'll explain. So let me go to game fxml, open in scene builder. And I'll explain you what I did here. As you can see again, there is no data. A word is a label. As you can see, it's a text or a label. It's uh, the same thing. There are two different things, but you can do the same things with them. So I just put this word and I put this word. I changed the color of this word to gray. And as you can see, our data is empty, but in here, there is some text which we need to fill in our controller. And this is a text field in which user can enter the name. And when you go to code, again, it needs to have some ID, so user word. And we're going to use this ID to extract the word that the user has entered and compare it to the word that is on the screen. And as you can see, on key pressed it says start game so when the user is in here in this text field 
and when he starts typing on key pressed, we'll call the start game and we will start counting down and we'll shift the words and so on. So this is basically all you need to know and of course these things also have their IDs so we can change them. So this is accuracy, words per minute and this is seconds. And that's basically it and now we need to go to our game controller and do the code. The first thing that we have to do is we have to initialize all the things that we have on the screen. So there is a lot of them and I'll show you on the screen. So these are the seconds. These are the words per minute and this is the accuracy as you can see here. So seconds, words per minute, accuracy. Program word and second program word is this. So this is the program word that we want to set first and this is the second program word. And this is the second program word. This is user word. So as you can see here, text field user word. And here we have two images, correct and wrong. So these are these images. So check and wrong. But they are invisible currently. As you can see, they are here. There is two of them, as you can see in the left corner. But their opacity is set to zero. And then when the user enters a correct world, we will we'll set the opacity to 1 and then after a few seconds we'll set it to 0 again. So they are always on the screen but we just don't see them. And this is the play again button. So now that you understand what everything is on the screen, now we need to load our words. And we'll be using an array list to do that. And we'll read the words from a text file, which you can also download in the description. And let's create it right now. So new file words list. I'll just copy. So, okay, it's text. And I'll just copy them. There's, I think, 1000 words. And you can download the file. So, yeah, there's 1000 words and each word is on a new file, a line. And we will store that in an array list, as I said. So we'll write array list of type string and call it words. And we also need to have a method which adds words to this array list from the file. So we have add to list and we have a reader. It will read each line, as you can see, read line and then append it to the arrays list and then close the file and that's that's pretty much it it just reads these words and adds them to java and since we also want to initialize this screen our class game controller needs to implement initializable and we need to implement the method click OK and as you can see here we have the initialize and in this initialize we will say OK so our button play again during the game needs to be invisible and needs to be disabled. We'll set the seconds to 60 we'll use the method add to list so this over here so our data gets loaded in our array list and then we'll shuffle our array list so each time the user plays the game they get different 1000 words in a different order. And then we need to set the first word and the second word until the user starts playing and then we will need to shuffle those words again. And uh, this word counter variable just says, okay, if this is on zero, this is on one. If this is on one, this is on two. So we can go up here and we can say private int word counter is equal to zero. So it will start, we'll shuffle the list and then we'll just take the first word and this will take the second word. And after we do that, we increment by one. So this is on first word and this is on second word. And now we also want to initialize the method of saving the data to a file. So when the user plays, he will, let's say, have 50 correct words and three incorrect words. And we want to save that into a file. So each time the user clicks play game, this initialize method will get called. And we will create a file. So we'll take the current date 
and we'll create a file called save data with this name so we'll save it to this is directory source this is directory data and our name will be current date and we'll strip it so i will show you i will demonstrate to you what this does and we add the text file at the end so this is a way of recognizing at which time the user has played we could have also created uh, some like a unique identifier but i think this approach is very simple because each date we also take the seconds so even if the user clicks play game three times it will still ha take him a few seconds and the files will be different so i chose this so all file names are different our save data is red because we need to go here and we need to say private file save data and it is no longer red as you can see so in here we create a unique identifier and then we create a file with that name and then we try to create a new file with this name and we say file created or file already exists and i'll demonstrate to you in a second what this does but in these files we will actually save save the user data and we also have a stored we also have that file stored in a variable so we can access it later when we want to store the data actually so in here we just create the file and then later after 60 seconds we will store this data okay so we need to create our data uh, directory so you go to new and you choose a package the um, data okay so this will be our folder in which we save those files and that is all for the initialize and now we need to do some game logic but first if you go to game you will see that we haven't initialized our main two main menu method so let's do that two main menu method gets called when we as you can see here it is on our play again button so when the user wants to play again we'll just send them back to the main menu and then they can play again and that is a very simple method uh, maybe you can stop the video and try it yourself if not uh, here's how it goes so you just as we did before you just change the scene so that is our two main menu when the user clicks that play again button um we have initialized everything that we have to and now we have to start the game so when the user starts typing we have to we have to start the game and as if you go here and try to find a red you can see that we haven't created it yet so start game gets called on key pressed so when the user starts typing the game starts so let's go to the game controller and under this method, let's create a new method called start game. 